Sometimes in life, we get to a point where we think we have made it. We have it all figured out. That's when we become complacent in our comfort. It's only when we push ourselves outside of that comfort zone that we can experience true growth. I seek out races that are going to test me to a point where I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not sure if I have the ability to finish or not. If something doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. And this race will definitely challenge anyone. This is the Barkley Fall Classic. My name is Carrie Allen. I'll be running the Barkley Fall Classic in a couple days. This will be my sixth time running the event, but they change the course every year, so it's essentially like a different race each time. I've yet to make the full 50K distance. The course gets harder and harder every year, and each year I seem to get a little bit closer, but I just haven't quite been able to get there. I'm really hoping that this is the year. I think that this is the hardest trail race at this distance, although we really don't even know what that distance is. The Barkley Fall Classic is a 50 kilometer trail race in the mountains of East Tennessee. But for those who have run it, it is so much more. It is not possible to explain it to someone who hasn't been out there. Those who attempt to race beyond the Yellow Gate are a rare breed, runners who are looking to find their limits and push beyond. Whatever course race director Lazarus Lake creates for us will have several massive climbs and descents, intended to test you not only physically but mentally as well. Can you continue on knowing that what lies ahead is even worse than what has already beaten you down? No GPS, no crews, and don't expect much from the aid stations. You are out there on your own. There are different cutoffs throughout the race course until if you are tough enough, you ultimately reach the decision point. If you make it there in time, you have a terrible choice to make. Either a short jog to the finish line to call it quits or push onward to another very difficult trail in pursuit of victory. Do you have what it takes? Four thirty. Time to get ready. In a moment, a cigarette will be lit, and four hundred morons will venture out into the unknown to challenge themselves, to push their bodies to achieve that which very few will ever accomplish. There is no more training to be done, no more plans to make, no one to ask for help. Help is not coming. Now it's just you and the course, and it's time to give it all you have in pursuit of your goal. You have everything you need within yourself to finish what you're about to start. Only one question remains. Five. Four. Three. Two. Everyone has a plan to get punched in the face. One. How am I supposed to go up there? How badly do you want it? The pace the whole time. That's right. He said run the whole first loop, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going off the road. Bridge capacity five people. <laughs> at, half, at what time? That's why the stretch is ready. Uh, well, we had a couple miles to spread out, but it still didn't make a difference. Yeah. They were too easy miles. Well, the other years were burned with start. I liked her post the other week. I'm pretty tired. I'm pretty tired. <laughs> I'm just going to have some pizza and beer now. Actually, it was two weeks ago, so I won't be getting missed if I did that. But... See people running up there. On the North Old Mac. There we go. Time to run. Go. Gotta loosen them up. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Hey guys. Yeah. Good morning. There you go, buddy. Yeah. All right. Give her. Runner coming on your left. <laughs> no, just down there. I need to pop up. Coming into A1. Gonna get the bib punch. Fill up the bottles and go. Thank you. Hey, thanks. Your bit punch. 
Thank you so much. That's good. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. We'll see you in a couple hours. <laughs> On we go. <laughs> Good, job. Good job, man. Let's go. Past the yellow gate. Start of loop two. A little bit harder than loop one. <laughs> and time to eat. One switch back. Ah, ah, ah. Number 10. Four more to go. Oh, sweet. Yeah. 14 on this side, 18 on the back. Is that right? That's right. Let's start seeing the boulders. We're almost there. See the top from here. Gotta fuel up before we hit the rundown. Because it's right here. All right. Three hours and 30. 50 minute climb, that's not too bad. As long as you got the energy to run down now. This way. Here we go. Just trying to move as fast and efficiently as possible. But also be careful because these rocks can end your day. I already saw a guy walking back at the yellow gate because he went, went too hard and fell and knee was all bloody. So you don't want that to happen. But if I want to finish, I gotta move. That's yeah, easy trail. <laughs> this is switchback 11. We're over halfway down to the creek. Gotta run if you wanna finish. Gotta run. Reef is looking dry. I don't think we're gonna have water to cool off this year. Is there any water? Very little. Are you alright? Yeah. Oh. Alright, time to climb. Got about an hour 15 to make this climb to the next aid station, which is about exactly how long it took me in my training run a month ago. <sighs> of course, I was fresh. I was fresh on that day. Now we're getting close to three hours in. So yeah, getting warmed up now. <sighs> Just gotta keep grinding it out. I know that each climb of the course gets progressively harder, so it's way worse than this coming up.
Uh, oh, man. Got stung like eight times. Oh, that sucked. That really hurts. That was a miserable mile, and then top it off, getting stung in the head a bunch of times. Oh. Running behind me at some Benadryl, so thank you for that, whoever you are. So, short little rundown before we go on again. I gotta lie, my legs are tired, but this pain in my head is excruciating. It's done like three or four times in the year. It's huge beast. Up to the top of that second climb. Here's a sign. And wildness is preservation of the world. That means we got about a mile or so to the aid station. Then we get the last runnable section of the day. Here we go. Look at the morons just swinging away. Up and up and up. See the cut through up ahead, there's runners going down that way. This took a lot longer than, than the plan for the 50K. Coming in day two. That was a brutal section. But loop two is climbing's done. I got about a three mile downhill run from here. So let's get going. Punch two. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here. You bet. Thank you for playing. It's yeah. good. Keep it up. Anyone have water? Yeah. I'm going to have water. Yeah. Thank you so much for being out here. That's good. Got a three mile downhill from here. So. Thank you. Let's go. This is great. Got a nice cool breeze for the rundown. I think I gotta face reality that the 50K just may not be in the cards this year. Knew I wasn't trained very well for this, but I wanted to come out and give it a shot anyway, push myself, see what I'm capable of. Things get hard, life gets hard, running is hard, racing's hard. But you gotta face that adversity, push through it. That's how you get better. So I'm, I'm out here trying to get better today. The never ending boulder field. You wanna run, but it's also steep and painful. So I'm running a lot, taking short little walk breaks to hydrate. Cause it, it's cool, but it is so humid. Moonlog branch. Cool. Yeah. That, that really hurt me because I, I was done. Uh, all my energy got back. You know, was, uh, uh, this is the best weather I've ever had here. Oh, okay. Well, there's Bird Mountain. Things were just about back to the Yellow Gate. Now we're five hours in, about 16 miles. I don't know, 4,000 feet of climbing or 5,000, something like that. So we're doing pretty good, but whew, it's kicking my butt. Fist bump it. Oh, fist bump, fist bump. Let's go, oh, let's go. You're doing great. Thanks. Here we go, 8-3. Right Number three. Number three. Thank you. You look fresh. Uh, water? I got lots of food, so I'm good. Thank you for being here, though. Thanks. I think I'm going to add another minute or two. Might as well. 
This is part of the race, I think. Ugh. What's that? Yeah. Got to keep going. <laughs> if I do the whole thing, I got eight up eight more hours. We'll see. There's just not another race I've done that's anything like this one. I really love running the BFC to test myself, to see how far I can push myself and try to achieve something that I'm not even sure I'm capable of doing. I also love all the people that I've met through this race. They've kind of become like my, my Barkley family. I kind of equate this event as not just a race, but like a weekend family reunion where everybody is the crazy uncle. I think every family has that one person who does things that are just so far out there that you can't even believe it. This race just seems to attract people that are all like that. Not many people look at the race and see some of the things you have to do and think, I want to do that. But the Barkley family is just a group of people that will share the photos of how shredded their arms and legs got when they spent an hour going one mile up Rat Jaw or talk about how they were puking for so long and then ask, when can I sign up for next year? It's just a certain type of person. I think we all just kind of get each other and we just enjoy suffering out there together. It's just an awesome event and I wouldn't want to miss it for anything. We go up chimney top. From here, it's the same thing I did for the marathon last year. I got eight hours to do it. It's gonna be tough. I can't believe I forgot my pocket burger. So, another Rice Krispie I have to do. So, chimney top trail. I'm kind of look at this in three sections. So, do the first climb to the creek. Try to get that in an hour. We'll do a creek to Cave of Wonders. Do that in an hour. Cave of Wonders get to campground. Hopefully about 30 minutes and then campground to aid station 30 minutes. So hopefully I'm gonna get this done in three hours. Look at that, there actually is a view. Oh, we're all cramping. We are the walking dead. It's mindlessly propelled forward in pursuit of a goal. Rough ridge. That was very rough. About 40 minute climb. We got a half mile or so down to the creek. Even though everything hurts, as Laz would say, if it's downhill, you better be running. I think that's the creek. So, I'm there right in one hour. Somehow we're still in this. Gotta keep pushing. Not much of the flowing water here. Just got a quick cool down at the creek. And now we're climbing again. This next section, we got six switchbacks. And the first one already. Here comes the rain. Switchback six. Now comes everybody's favorite part. We're on the ridge. I think it flattens out. Sit rock looks mighty tempting right now. Someone did. <laughs> Hit the level out. Get a couple more minutes to the cave. Making a great time though. 133 right now. 
I don't think this is going to take me to an hour. Don't get cocky. Made it to the sand. No, we made it to the Cave of Wonders. 45 minutes. <sighs> Struggle bus. <sighs> the Cave of Wonders. Now we ride the roller coaster to the campground. Oh, for the night, it's so beautiful. How lucky are we to be able to do a race here? Took that bowling ball in the face. <sighs> right calf just seized. Trying to step over these little rocks here. Oh, oh, that always gets the blood pumping. Just when I started feeling good. Oh man, always something to get you. It's gonna take a minute to get a salt cap and chug some of my water. Oh, definitely hobbling now. That puts a damper on things. Oh. Baby steps to the aid station. Oh, I get off this climbing. It's killing me. Starting to loosen up a little bit. I definitely got to drink more electrolytes. What a beautiful spot though. On the ridge on Chimney Top Trail. Nice cool day, cool breeze. We could not have asked for better weather on race day. False Summit, number eight. I had my hand on there. Might have gone down. I think we're on the downhill now. But the past the chimney and the campground. I had my timing off, but maybe about 2.30, which is kind of what I guesstimated. But running, unfortunately, is kind of out the window because I got so many cramps right now. I think if I try to run, I'll put myself on the ground. <laughs> so I'm just hiking as fast as I can. Marathon is quite an accomplishment, I think. There's a chimney. Not what I came here for, but I got to be proud of that with how my day's gone so far. And uh, I guess. Training kicks off for next year, today. Ah, screw it. I'll try to run and see what happens. What's the worst thing that happens? I get another cramp. I already got a couple. Ow. The ankle really hurts now from that bee sting. What are you gonna do? It's a campground. Be a great place to camp. It's quite a hike to get up here, though. Thought you were backpacking stuff.
I hate this freaking part. It's so steep. With cramps, that's good. So it'll take little baby steps. I'd love to see how uh, the race leaders take this part if they just fly down and run in the whole way. Probably. Right now I've got about a mile, I think, to the aid station. I'm just going to do everything I can so that when I get there I can be as prepared as I can be. Because i got to get some electrolytes in me before I start going down Rat Jaw. Hopefully we'll be able to fight off the cramps. I mean, it's just a never-ending battle out here. But uh, going, Rat Jaw, going down Rat Jaw is going to be brutal. There's your rain, Jessica. Hope you're still out here and you get to go enjoy your power line mudslides. <laughs> wow. Fog's rolling in now too. What a cool scene though. But not ideal racing conditions. The turn on the Splicewood Trail. But we are continuing on Chimney Top. For another half mile or so, I think. I don't really know. I was right on my estimate, about three hours. But I think that was too slow. I really need to do that in like two and a half, but didn't have it today. Well, friends, three o'clock was my drop dead cutoff to feel like I actually had a chance to continue on and do the 50K. So, pretty sure that's uh, out of the question at this point. I'm not stopping though. Just gonna have some fun on the power line sections. <laughs> Hopefully get some kicks out of people butt sliding down and uh, we'll claim our marathon finish about three hours from now probably. I'm trying to run, I just can't. I mean, I can, but it's very painful. Every about 15 or 20 steps, I feel that cramp coming back. Finally made it. Oh, that section is brutal. And as Laz says, it only gets worse. Dying a little. <laughs> oh, up on the tower. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. I was working with the Coalfield boys. I said, I got three hours to do six miles. Should be easy, right? No. This is probably the hardest six miles anywhere. Especially in the rain. When you're, what, I guess 23, 24 miles in. I was just thinking about that hike I did back on the Cont back at the beginning of the summer. And I thought it was terrible. And then I thought it was good by BSC standards. Today I've basically done the same pretty close to the same stats about three hours faster so I've grown by leaps and bounds fitness wise but BSC requires something else I just don't quite have it yet oh. I'm gonna be cramping the whole way down so I'm taking it really slow oh yeah Hi. the fire tower I suppose. <laughs> You're still in it. Still going. Don't get hypothermia up here. No, we'll be fine. Who says BFC doesn't have views? <laughs> Time to gear up. We are going down Rachel. Uh, uh. 
stay on the trail. I know. You good? Yep. Hey look, Bradshaw has flowers. This is literally insane. I think I gotta pay out of pocket. This is awesome. Oop. Great work. You can finally see the prison down there. Two and a half hours to descend Rat Jaw. That was insane. I'm going to the tunnel. I'm tempted to quit here, but I said there is no quit. I'm gonna keep going. You gotta time me out. Into the tunnel we go. Now, break into the prison. <laughs> I'm counting one of my biggest successes at BFC. I climbed up and over the ladder and didn't get a foot cramp. That's happened to me every year. It didn't happen this year. So, gotta find you know, small little victories in a day like today. Not today, bus. Maybe later though. At this point, I got two and a half hours. Is there anything like right draw? I might even time out for the marathon, but I don't care. I never give up. There is the wall. That's gonna be real fun in the mud. How am I supposed to go up that? One step at a time, I guess. Sometimes you gotta stop. Take in the view. It's pretty incredible. Looks like one more steep pitch to the top of meth. And we'll see what happens. A little bit different than the fun running pictures we had on the road at the beginning. <laughs> I think I just heard uh, rangers up there say that I might get cut. It's taking me, it's taking me 45 minutes to come up this. There's no way I'm gonna go down testicle back up and then all the way back down this to the prison in, in an hour and a half. That good. And that's good. That's good that you do that. But anyways, that's they gotta turn everybody back this time. Yep. There's just, there's just not, there's, there's not enough two time. Hours. Yeah, I know. That's not even enough time. You're right. It's not even enough time to finish. Well, I appreciate you being out here. All right, man. Take your time and get back safe. Yep. Yep. Had to turn around. I was like a couple hundred feet from the top. Yeah, gotta follow the 
follow the sweepers advice and you know this is the right move i had no chance to make it in time anyway so why waste you know 10 more minutes getting to the top and coming back everyone at bfc must self-extract i guess so taking the walk of shame back down meth lab to the prison or i will board the bus and go back to the start and you know what i gave everything i had today wasn't it quite enough? No, it wasn't close to enough. Made it to the bottom about 25 minutes. It's like a mile back on the flatness. Hey, future me, I hope everything went perfectly for you and you are holding your croix de bark. And if not, I hope that you pushed yourself as hard as you could push yourself and you're content with that effort and proud of what you accomplished. Um, hopefully you're not hanging your head in shame like you were last year, and I hope you can hold your head up high and be proud of everything that you did out there today. I really hope that you learn from this and that you grow from this and that you're going to be a better person going forward, not just running wise, but in all aspects of your life. And don't forget, this was supposed to be fun, so hopefully you had a blast getting your butt kicked up and down the mountain with your friends all day. Now it's time for the best steak sandwich in Tennessee. Coming to get another sandwich? I just got back. How about you? Oh yeah, so you get your first sandwich? Yeah. Sure Did you, uh, you, you stop at the bottom of Rat, y'all? Dude, I... All right, sitting in a nice warm car. And I'm about to eat my sandwich and then head home. A lot to think about if I want to try this race again or not. This race just requires something I don't know if I have or I don't know if I can commit to doing the work to get it at this point in my life. Um, I'd love to keep doing it, but... Sometimes I gotta be realistic. I gave everything I had today. Had it not been for the rain, I definitely would've got the marathon again. 50K, like everything would've had to go perfectly. And it was not from the moment I got stung by the bees, really. I mean, that, that was like excruciating pain in my head for hours. Uh, but I'm proud of myself that I didn't give up, I didn't, give myself that excuse to drop even you know after that bird mountain loop but I could, it went thought went through my head you know these this sting could could really be something bad for you but <clears throat> I laid down in that pond and that was ice cold and that felt great and you know I just you just got to do something little to give yourself a little positive reinforcement and get some motivation to just keep moving and you never know what's going to happen. Unfortunately, you know, weather played a big factor today, but I can't use that as an excuse because a lot of people uh, still finish the 50K despite the weather. Uh, they're just in another world athletically than I am. <laughs> Ultimately, I had a blast out there. Uh, saw so many friends I've met through this race over the years. Um, <laughs> it was funny. A lot of people recognized me from like my Georgia death race video and, and that's just cool. Like, hey man, I watched your Georgia Death Race video. That really helped me uh, figure out how to plan for when I did it and I finished this year. I was like, that makes me feel really good. Hopefully uh, this video might show you how not to do BFC. Um, unfortunately, I don't really have the knowledge to tell you what to do to finish BFC because I've yet to accomplish that. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just gotta push yourself and just keep, keep, you know, go as far as you can. For me today, that was getting swept at the top of Meth Lab and. I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm okay with the fact that I went as far as I could and they had to tell me to stop. I didn't give up despite some really bad circumstances. Um, so a lot to think about, but you know, the race is a year away and I always know that if I want a spot, I can get a spot at the, you know, in the month of fear as Laz likes to call it. You know, the month leading up to the race, so many people drop out. And if you want a spot in this race, you can get a spot in this race. So if it's ever on your list, prepare like you're in, train hard, uh, and, you know, just be, get on that Facebook group, Barkley Fall Classic. And, you know, if you want to do this race, you can do this race. You'll really learn something about yourself. <clears throat> and get an awesome steak sandwich. I'm starving. I got to eat this right now. So I'll talk to you guys later. So it's Tuesday, three days after the race. 
Um, I just want to take a few days to kind of think about the weekend as a whole before I did this kind of last minute reflection. Um, it was an awesome weekend, you know, getting to, it's not just the race, it's connecting with friends I've met over the years, making new friends, and I knew I was going to have a great time, and I did. Um, unfortunately, the race didn't really go how I had hoped it would. Um, you know, this is my sixth year doing the race, and I was, I've been getting closer and closer to getting the 50K, and this year, just so many things went wrong um, that just put that completely out of reach. Um, I could, I could blame getting stung in the head by bees, you know, a couple hours in. Um, that was excruciating pain, but from what I've read, a lot of other people got stung too, and they pushed on and were able to finish. Um, a lot of people dealt with cramps. Um, I had a couple, a couple times where my calves seized up and put me on the ground. And I could blame Mother Nature for sending rain right before I got to Rat Jaw and just making it a complete mess. Um, but ultimately, you know, all the runners had to deal with those things and different, you know, different types of adversity throughout the race. And still a third of the runners found a way to finish the 50K. So um, really the problem was that I was not prepared at all to run this race. I was in great shape in the spring. I set a lot of PRs at a lot of different distances, had some great races. Um, but after that, I kind of took a few months off and lost all that fitness, um, gained some weight and ultimately I was not in shape enough to get what I wanted, which was the 50K finish. I said at the beginning of this video, how badly do you want it? And obviously I want this very badly. I've done it six times and you know, this is a race that just beats you down so bad. Uh, I don't think if, if I didn't want it, I wouldn't keep coming back. Um, but it's one thing to say that I want it. It's another thing entirely to actually do the work that it takes to get what I want. And I've, I've done that in past years. That's why I've you know seen continued improvement. But this year I did not do that. Um, I went into the race with the thought of, well, I've, I think I probably can at least do the marathon. And that's really no way to approach the Barkley Fall Classic. you got to be all in and committed because that's really what this race demands. Part of the problem with this race, and really it's not a not really a problem it's more part of the challenge of this race is defining your success um, for some people success is getting to the start line and you know maybe doing a couple hours on the first loop and for some people success is you know pushing themselves as far as they can and you know not stopping until they miss a cutoff which is what I did this year other people you know success is only if you hit the 50k this year I kind of settled and I knew that I could push myself and, you know, until I timed out if I had to. I've done that before. Um, so I allowed myself to think that that was success. You know, we're, we're all on our own journeys and, you know, everybody's welcome to come out to the BFC and test your own limits and see what you're capable of. <sighs> Maybe year seven is my lucky year. Who knows? If I ever get another chance to run, I... I'm going to do everything I can possibly do to be in the best shape I can be in and race day, both physically and mentally, and you can do that too. Um, if you ever want to run this race, just know that you have to bring your absolute best. Um, even if your best is not to finish, you know, you can still go out there and find your own level of success. Um, you'll be welcome and you'll be treated as equal by even the people who are winning the race. Um, as I found, as I was struggling down Rat Jaw, several hours behind them, they were quick to encourage me and tell me how great I looked, even though I probably looked like a zombie covered in mud who could barely move an inch at a time. But also, I got to give you a warning, just uh, to be aware, the Barkley Fall Classic isn't something you can just do once and get it out of your system. Uh, once you get out there one time and experience what this race is all about, you're going to want to come back again and again. Um, so you can't get the Barkley out of your system, it gets into your soul. So be prepared to bring your best, and hopefully I'll see you out there in 2024. Hope you enjoyed the video.